All right, and here's gonna be our second video uh, for section 3.5. Uh, and we're gonna continue looking at the method of undetermined coefficients. Uh, and our second example here is y double prime minus 3y prime plus 4y is equal to 3t squared plus 2t minus 4. Again, we want to guess the form of y. But notice that the solution here, uh, the end here, that's g of t, has a t squared in it. Uh, plus 2t minus 4, and so on. But uh, this solution over here is a polynomial, and the highest degree, uh, well, I wouldn't say solution, let's say g of t is a polynomial, and the highest degree is 2 or the degree of that polynomial is 2, so the highest power is 2. So that says that perhaps uh, we can guess that y is a polynomial function with degree 2. Of degree 2. And again, I shouldn't say highest degree here. The degree is 2. Uh, the highest power is 2. <clears throat> okay, so perhaps y is a polynomial function of degree 2. So let's uh, suppose that y is equal to a t squared plus b t plus c. Then y prime is equal to 2 a t plus b. And y double prime is equal to... 2a. Okay, so then we plug that back into our original differential equation. So, right, we had y double prime minus 3y prime plus 4y is equal to, all right, y double prime was 2a minus 3 times y prime, which is 2at plus b, uh, plus 4 times a t squared plus b t plus c. And this is supposed to equal 3 t squared plus 2 t minus 4. Uh, well, let's uh, reduce this left-hand side here, right? And what do we get? Uh, so we get 4at squared, and then let's combine the all the values with t in it. So we have plus t times, let's see, we have a b here, minus, it looks like 6a. And that's uh, this term and that term. And then it looks like we have a plus 2a minus 3b plus c. Uh, are all the terms without a t in there. I forgot something. What was that? We had a 4at squared. I forgot a 4 here for 4b, and I'm forgetting a 4 here with 4c. I'm sorry about that, uh, but quick correction there. So this should be 4at squared plus t times 4b minus 6a plus 2a minus 3b plus 4c. Uh, and then we match up here. So we have three equations. We have 2a minus 3b plus 4c is equal to negative 4, and we have 4b minus 6a is equal to 2, and we have 4a is equal to 3. All right, and where did we get those from? Uh, you can see here, right, that 
We have 4AT squared here, and we have 3T squared here, and those are the only T squared, so 3 has to equal 4A. We have 2T here, and we have T times 4B minus 6A, so that means 2 has to be 4B minus 6A. And same for that last part. So when we uh, solve all of this, we get A is equal to 3 fourths. Plug in A into here, so 4B minus 6 times 3 fourths equal to 2 implies that B is equal to 13 eighths once we solve that. <laughs> And then we get 2 times 3 fourths minus 3 times 13 eighths plus 4 times c is equal to negative 4 implies that c is equal to negative 5 30 seconds once you solve that one. This tells us that our particular solution y is equal to 3 fourths t squared plus 13 eighths t minus 5 30 seconds. All right. So that was one more example. Let's do a final example here, which is going to be Example three, and that is going to be y double prime minus two y prime plus y is equal to three cosine of t. Now this time, we're looking at the solution over here, this three cosine of t, and we're thinking, well, okay, so perhaps the general solution, or the particular solution is some constant times cosine of t. But if we take a derivative of cosine, we're going to get a sine. And we take a derivative of that, we go back to cosines. So really, this formula over on the left, once we start taking derivatives, is going to have cosines and sines. So anytime we have a cosine or a sine over there, then here we want to make the choice... y is equal to a cosine of t plus b sine of t. Again, we're guessing that maybe there's a sine in there because if we take the derivative of cosine, we get sines here. So really, cosines and sines are involved. So we're going to make this uh, be our choice for what we think the solution might look like. And then we're going to determine that uh, that's correct. <laughs> so... If this is y, then what do we need to do? We need to calculate y prime and y double prime. So y prime is negative a sine of t plus b cosine of t. And y double prime is equal to negative a cosine of t minus b sine of t. So this tells us that y double prime minus 2y prime plus y is equal to, all right, y double prime was negative a cosine of t minus b sine of t minus 2 times y prime, which is negative a sine of t plus b cosine of t plus y, so this is going to be plus uh, a cosine of t plus b sine of t, and all of this needs to be equal to 3 cosine of t. Okay? So if we combine like terms here on this part, on this left part, we get cosine of t times, see we had a negative a, here we had a negative 2b, and here we had a plus a, okay? And then plus sine of t times, let's see, everything times sine of t, we have a negative b here. We've got a positive 2a, and we have a positive b, 
And again, this is equal to three cosine of t. So the a's cancel, the b's cancel. So it looks like we got cosine of t times negative 2b plus sine of t times 2a is equal to 3 cosine of t. But, uh, well, what's the uh, coefficient on the sines over here? Well, the coefficient on the sines is 0. So 2a is equal to 0 and negative 2b is equal to 3. So we get that a equals 0 and b is equal to negative 3 halves, which tells us that y equal to a cosine of t plus b sine of t becomes y is equal to a was 0 and b is negative 3 halves, so we get negative 3 halves sine of t. And this is our particular solution. Uh, and again, notice that uh, if we had made the choice y equals a cosine of t here, well, we wouldn't have got the correct solution because the correct solution was actually just a sine. So anytime we see a cosine over on the right, uh, we need to include both cosine and sine. The same if we see a sine there, we need to include both cosine and sine. All right. There are a lot of examples and a lot of types of uh, problems where we can use this method of... Um, undetermined coefficients to uh, solve the problem. Uh, and there's a lot of examples in this section. So I've covered three. I really suggest that you read through this section and look at all the examples in the book as well, uh, because there are many more types that you need to look at uh, to be able to do the homework. Uh, but they all stem from this same idea. But again, the book provides several more examples, so you should certainly look through those. And in particular, on page, uh, one moment while I verify what page that is. Uh, on page uh, 28, we kind of get a summary of this section. Uh, sorry, that's not 28. Uh, on page 139 and 138, we get a summary of this section. Uh, so you should go uh, and read that as well. But really, you should be reading through most of the section anyways. Uh, so anyways, that concludes part uh, two of the second video for section 3.5. Uh, so that's where we'll end.